spend your youth in the library fortress of Candlekeep, under the kind tutelage of your foster father, Gorion. Imoen shared this home, a kindred spirit. Her background was as mysterious as your own. Gorion's murder brought answers to your questions when his killer, Saravok, was revealed to be your brother. You and Saravok were a product of the Time of Troubles, a chaotic period when gods were made flesh and forced to walk the earth. One such deity foresaw his own death and walked the land before the cataclysm. He left a score of mortal offspring intended to be the fuel for his rebirth. The god was Baal, lord of murder, and you are one of his children. Saravak sought a war of sacrifice to prove his worth, believing he could become the new lord of murder. You killed your brother, sending his tank back to Baal. You were the hero of Baldur's Gate. But some suspected you shared the same lineage as Saravok. You departed soon after, under circumstances much darker than anyone would have believed. They came as you rested, figures cloaked in mist that clouded your thoughts, blurring the lines between consciousness and dreaming. There was no malice or hatred, no mention of an old score, only quick capture and the promise of grim deeds to come. My name is Orin, and I was inspired by my foster father's tales of adventure amidst the barrens, hills, and forests of Faroon. I've learned to appreciate the power and challenges of the wilderness. While I cannot remember ever venturing further than the outer walls of Candlekeep, I am a welcome and frequent visitor to its stables and pens. That was nearly a year ago. My father and I fled Candlekeep, our home, because it was no longer safe. Unfortunately, we ran into the very people who wanted to find us. An armored man led a group, and they killed my father while I fled. I ran into the forest. It was the worst night of my life. In the morning, I found my best friend Imowen. She had snuck out of Candlekeep to find us, but she found me alone. From then on, we continued as my father would have had me do. We met more friends and our group of two eventually grew to six. These were good people. Imowen and I were joined by Jahira, Khalid, and Ajantis. We eventually found more, Minsk and Rasad, but I needed my space. Jahira and Khalid thought to take over as foster parents. I was no longer a little girl though. I was 20 and could decide what I wanted on my own. We parted and we found Branwen to help with healing our group. Together we fought off bounty hunters and found work as adventurers in the Sword Coast to rid it of its evils. I saw more of the world in those months than in my entire life. Our skills grew, and we looted from our enemies or bought vastly superior equipment, all while still being pursued by the man who slew my father. Losing him, my foster father Garion, was really, really hard for me. I endured weeks of mourning, but what shook me out of my bleak depression was the young paladin Ajantis. He was merely a year older than myself, and we fell in love, and after a time, engaged to be married. Eventually, we found out why this man in the armor suit was hunting me. It was a plot within a plot. The armored man was the son of a man who ran the local Iron Throne organization. They hoped to greatly profit off the iron shortage, which they caused by poisoning the iron ore in the local mines and using mercenaries to act as bandits to raid any and all caravans going to Baldur's Gate, especially the ones that transported iron. We thwarted their plans and destroyed their organization, but then I found out a harsh truth. I was a child of Baal as was the armored man. He was my brother, or half-brother if you will. His name was Saravok. To become the heir of Baal, one had to kill all the other Baal spawn, and I was one that he could not defeat. They did their best to frame and destroy me, but with help we succeeded in outmaneuvering them. We exposed Saravok to the world at the Ducal Palace in Baldur's Gate in front of the Grand Dukes themselves. He wanted to start a war so big that many thousands would die from it. He didn't care who won or lost but did believe that causing such a calamity would further his ascent to taking Baal's place, a god who was dead. He was so close to becoming a Grand Duke himself and planning on killing all the others with his minions. He ran and took his most loyal and powerful friends with him. We tracked him down in an area long forgotten. It was an old city beneath Baldur's Gate. 
There, we confronted Servok for the final time, and by my hand I put enough arrows into him to kill him. It was done, and it was over. Or I thought it was. Agantis, learning of my heritage, had to go see his parents. He would have to explain the situation and ask for their permission to marry me again. Being a child of Baal is never to be normal or easily accepted. It is assumed that we are all like my evil father, my real father. This is why I always refer to Garion as my father. He may not have sired me, but he was my mentor, my guide, my protector, my father. He loved me as his own daughter, and I loved him. Still, love him very much. I had proven myself of good heart and would not fall to Baal's influence, despite my haunting dreams, and Agantis knew that. He knew me well by that point, but his parents, who were a noble family in Waterdeep, did not, and so he would need to speak to them in person. Over the following weeks, we continued to hunt for Servok's allies in and around the city. In the meantime, I was hailed as the hero of Baldur's Gate. Once his staunchest supporter, Korlaz, was brought in as a prisoner, I finally could relax. With Servok and his influence gone, everyone in our group besides Imowen went their separate ways. I then planned on a deep, restful sleep that I had been waiting for for months. Only, I was awakened by Imowen. There was an intruder in the Ducal Palace where we had been staying in the city. Imowen was attacked and poisoned, but we found on one of the attackers a picture drawn of a likeness of me with my name on it. That, and we deduced that they were crusaders sent to poison me, but instead got Imowen, my best friend. Kalar Argent and her crusaders to the north had been driving thousands of people from their homes, and the city had been filling with refugees while my party and I had been seeking out the last of Saravok's allies. Oddly, some hooded man had been shadowing us and kept speaking to me about giving in to the taint I held from Baal, and to seek power over all others. He had such a strong presence that he was even in several of my dreams. He was no normal man. I had to leave. I had to confront my attacker. I felt I had no choice. If they could get us here, then they could get us anywhere. Imon was still unconscious when I left, but since all my companions had gone, I had to gather a new adventuring party and march with a Flaming Fist unit that was heading north to join a coalition army with Waterdeep and Daggerford. The crusade had stopped and occupied Dragonspear Castle, which was about a week's travel on foot to the north of the city. They had caused such suffering to thousands of people in the area that the three cities had effectively declared war on the crusade. It pained me to leave my best friend, but she was in the care of Duke Laia Janath, a well-known and experienced wizard, and her health had stabilized. That, and the Grand Dukes of Baldur's Gate asked me personally to help them deal with Kalar Argent. Imowen, who had been previously a thief until Saravok was defeated, had been training under Duke Janath, and I knew she would be kept safe and given the best healing Baldur's Gate could offer. While this was occurring, and Baldur's Gate Flaming Fist was assembling, Ski Silverseal, the daughter of Entar Silvershield, one of the Grand Dukes of Baldur's Gate, had joined the Flaming Fist as a new recruit, with the intention of going north with us. She was rebelling against her father, but her father knew what she was up to, and had me swear to see her safely through this. I would really end up regretting that later. So I left the Ducal Palace, and managed to find Minsk and his witch Dinahir. I found the thief Safana, and the four of us traveled north to meet the Crusaders. Later, we found Rasad and Jahira, and they joined with us, along with the gnome named Glint, taking over Safana's role of thief, but with the added bonus of being a cleric as well. There were many small engagements with the Crusaders, but I found to my surprise that Kalar Argent and her crusade weren't evil, just misguided and reckless. They claimed to want to go into the Hells to liberate all the lost souls that had been taken by previous raids from Dragonspear Castle into the countryside by devils. After infiltrating and sabotaging them inside their very own castle, my party and I returned to the Coalition camp. I still hadn't received word from Ajantis. He had promised to write me. I started to grow worried as it had been more than a month since I had last seen him. There was a parley with the crusade and it turns out that Kalar and her right hand Hefernan, a mage that seemed to have much influence over her, insisted on me being turned over to them. Otherwise there would be a battle fought between the two sides. I would have done it. I would have gone with them. But the leaders of the coalition army, seeing that they desperately wanted me, refused and we then returned to our camp knowing that they couldn't be too far behind with their army. The crusade attacked the camp and we defended it brilliantly with the crusaders taking many casualties and losing very badly. After that our army assembled and without any siege weapons assaulted Dragonspear Castle. The barrel bush that I had placed underneath the castle to sabotage it was activated and their front wall came down. We won a terrific battle and destroyed the crusade. However, Kalar and Hefernan were nowhere to be found. All that was left to search was locked behind this very large and strong magically sealed door. 
We knew that they had to be there, and we prepared for it. By this point, I really wanted to, it all just to be over with, and every time I want that, I get thrown into another stressful situation of fighting against a powerful enemy. She and Heffernan were there, as well as most of her powerful supporters. It was there that Heffernan revealed who he truly worked for and took my blood to open the portal to Avernus, the first of the Nine Hells. This was why they wanted me the entire time, as Kalar was an Asimar, but was of too weak divine blood. You needed strong divine blood to open the portal, and only mine could do it as I was a direct descendant of a dead god. We were all pulled in and Heffernan disappeared. In fact, everyone outside my party did. We found Kalar with fewer of her allies, battling devils ahead. We fought several battles to reach her, only to find that she was confronted the local devil lord by the name of Belofet. There we saw Heffernan in his true devil form, but we also discovered what had motivated Kalar to start the crusade. It was her uncle that she had loved so much that had made thousands suffer just so she can get him back. As a young girl living in an order of the Aster Monastery, Kalar bristled at the discipline forced upon her by her elders. Seeking more power, she snuck into the order's library and read aloud from the Tome of the Nine. In doing so, she inadvertently opened a gate to Avernus and forfeited her soul to the fiend Belafet. On Argent interceded and offered his own soul in place of that of Kalar, freeing the young girl from hellish bondage. And so many years later, she started the crusade. The end result, after deciding to side with her against Belafet and defeating him and his lackey Heffernan, we freed On Argent and returned to the portal. I was hoping to bring her to the Coalition Army to be judged and sentenced for her crimes, but she decided to seek penance by staying behind and sealing the portal from the side of Avernus. There she remained, at least I know she made the right choice in the end, despite being so misguided in our world. In Avernus, alone and surrounded by enemies, she would fight until she was killed in battle. I suppose this is her atonement. We returned through the portal which closed behind us to Dragonspear Castle, and there was a big celebration afterwards. But that night, while I was sleeping, I had another dream with the hooded man. In it, a creature that he had shown me before attacked me, and thinking it was just a dream, I let it. It hurt as if I had really been struck, so I defended myself. Then, I awoke on the stone floor next to a dead and bleeding ski, with flaming fists accusing me of murdering her. I was brought back to Baldur's Gate in chains, and then put in the Flaming Fist prison. The hooded man came to see me once again, but this time revealed to me that he was the one that killed Ski. Why did he do this? I do not know, but for a time I actually thought I had done it in my dream without realizing it was her. I thought it was the monster in my dream and my attack that had killed her, but I saw a vision of him doing it. He used a dagger that took her soul so she could not be resurrected. Entar Silvershield, Ski's father, wanted me to die for this, but the other dukes, they saw all the good that I had done for the city, and let me sneak out of the Flame of Fist barracks, and to my freedom. Once outside the city, I met my friends. The dukes had told Imowen where to meet me. Imowen, Jahira, Khalid, Minsk, and Dinahir were waiting for me. I was effectively exiled from Baldur's Gate. Exiled from the Sword Coast. We traveled during the night, but just as we stopped to rest, a curious mist rose from the ground and then we were attacked by many who were stealthily hidden around us. It was an ambush, and the last thing I remember was being hit in the neck by a dart. And then... Blackness. <laughs>